gets fired. When you crank it, you can hear that one cylinder or more have no compression. With it running, it smokes white. It smells like fuel. It's definitely not burning the fuel because it's lost compression on a cylinder. It idles choppy. Breaking down this DD15, I just pulled the EGR cooler off and the exhaust manifold off. This piece is loose, I just gotta lift it and take it off. That's what that looks like. There's a bracket that goes here with three 16 millimeter bolts. I removed it. I loosened the two bolts at the bottom that hold the turbo. I didn't quite remove them. You don't really want the weight of the turbo on the return line for the oil because it'll probably crack it. So probably ideal to leave this plate somewhat bolt it on the driver's side I took the tube that goes into the intake off I undid all of the wiring harnesses I haven't taken the lines off just yet because I don't want any debris going in there I'm gonna take those off last and somehow cover them so I don't get any debris in there and then I'll be removing the wiring harness for the injectors and the jake brakes and the cam housing digging into this DD15 I've got this engine at number one TDC which means both intake and exhaust valve should have slack. If you look at the cam lobe, it's not on the cam lobe, meaning it is, it's on the resting place, meaning that there should be slack, but there is absolutely no slack on this intake valve. What happens is the valve sinks into the head as the engine is being used and if you don't do an overhead they have a tendency of getting tight when they get tight they don't sit properly and if they don't sit properly compression leaks past them and it burns the valve and the seat because it's not really making a seal it's staying open so from what I'm seeing, it's not going to surprise me when I look at the, when I take this head off and I look at the valves, they're more than likely going to be burnt. <clears throat> I guess we'll keep taking this apart and it's not only on cylinder one, it's basically all, all the intake valves are tight on this engine. They don't, they just don't have any slack, even though the cam is not on the lobe, they're completely tight. All right working on this cam housing what year is this truck bro? 14. 2014 model it has two 10 millimeter bolts behind the cams I've got the socket on this one with a extension Ten millimeter. You gotta take those off in order to remove the cam housing. If you leave them in, you break and stuff. So don't leave those in. All right, stop, Arthur. 
We can go up a little more. We need to clear the valves and start pushing it. All right, you can go towards the front a little bit. We're almost clear the back. Oh, well, once you got you on this pipe over oh, here. Let's see. Had to bring out the big toys because these are tight, man. The injectors are being held in by a 10 millimeter and they have this clamp hold down clamp when you're swapping an injector all you gotta do is remove the 10 after you've taken off the harness and you put a healy bar right here and just pry it straight out all right this is the back of the cylinder head. There are bolts by the gear. Make sure you remove those before you try to jank on the cylinder head. Otherwise, you're gonna break that head. So we'll take those up next. Now the head is ready to be removed. We just gotta figure out how to hoist it and lift it off the block so we can look at the extent of the damage on this particular engine. All right. Let's see what's going on with this head now. <laughs> 